The Isle is an interesting and overall very exciting game, and one that is evolving more so than most other games due to the nature of how it's been released. But looking at the game as a whole, the overall game isn't all that difficult. In fact, it's merely survive or, well, don't. But despite this simple concept, there are actually a myriad of systems there to assist you in this particular type of survival depending on what you are. And this can be everything from the sense system or the system we're going to be talking about today, being the ability to change your skin color and patterns to better fit your environments or just blatantly look cooler. And while on the surface it may not seem all that complex, most of these systems normally don't, but there are ways to exploit or in some cases just use this system productively enough that you can get away with some things you normally wouldn't be able to, and in some cases even have a slightly different playstyle and more fun. So, without further ado, I gladly present The Isle Survival Guide Episode 3. Skins and Camouflage now, before we talk about the gameplay benefits of the skin system, let's talk about the system itself in depth first. The system has five parts that you can select, that being detail, underbelly, body one, body two, and body three. Detail and underbelly are probably the easiest to talk about, so let's address them first. Detail follows a very small but specific type of color palette that is meant to highlight a dinosaur's specific traits such as the Carnotaurus' skull and parts of its back, while others like the Triceratops' crest and horns. Well, underbelly is just that, the underbelly of your dinosaur. Self-explanatory, I know, but you can choose quite a few different colors from it, which brings me to what I want to talk about mostly, which is body one, body two, and body three. Something to be noted about these colors is that they are actually not all the same. Underbelly, body one, body two, and body three all have separate color palettes, technically. The color palettes for all five actually originate from different creatures. Some of them are from the Utah Raptor, the Diablo, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, or even the Triceratops in some cases. That is where these color palettes come from. While they aren't all technically the same, they all do share very similar types of colors per body part. Now, that's basically it for the entirety of the system. It is relatively not complex. The only small adage is that you can change the pattern of the creature in the top left corner. But other than that, and the ability to save preset types of camouflage or types of colors for a creature, there really is nothing more to this system. It really is just designing your dinosaur within a reasonable spectrum. You can't create a dinosaur that is bright pink or bright purple for very obvious gameplay reasons that would more or less break immersion. And while I cannot definitively say that is why they have the system the way it is, I can confidently say that it would be quite jarring to have purple and red dinosaurs running about randomly. But with the system explained out of the way, let's get into the gameplay elements of this. So, first off, we're going to talk about the most influential part of this, at least in common play. That being camouflage. Now saying the word camouflage immediately has very obvious connotations. I mean blending into an environment by choosing a color palette that matches such. If you are going to constantly be in a plains area, you're going to want greens or lighter colors or maybe even darker greens if you're thinking of hiding in brushes. Something along these lines is what camouflage is referring to. And this is basically the entire system. You match the colors that you want with the environment you're going to spend most of your time in. That being said, while the system is relatively very uncomplex and the ability to camouflage is very self-explanatory, there are some tips that I have for certain creatures within the game. For one, say you're playing something along the lines of a Pachycephalosaurus or a Gallimimus. Maybe a darker green or browns might be a better option for you as you better blend into the really dark jungle foliage and the ground that's around it. The reason it's important to blend into this much darker foliage is because you're a small herbivore and even when fully grown, you don't grow much bigger than a small herbivore compared to most carnivores. So being able to blend in to the environment very easily by laying down or crouching can be a massive advantage for you, especially with bigger predators around such as the Tyrannosaurus or even Suchomimus. Now this actually is a similar tip for smaller carnivores as you aren't normally the top of the food chain in a particular area and blending into high-density foliage with a darker green or 
maybe even a dark brown to blend into the ground itself, isn't a bad idea for Rexes prowling around the area. Now there is one universal type trick that I would suggest doing if you're having trouble making it past the early stages of a dinosaur, such as its juvenile or its very infant stages. And this would be choosing a color palette that very easily blends into the environment around you. If you're having trouble surviving, it's normally because you're too easy to see, or you're not blending in well enough with your environment when you crouch or hide. And by no means does this mean the strategy you're currently going with is necessarily a bad one, but if you're constantly dying, it might be either due to playstyle, or in most cases, because you're too bright or too dark, you aren't blending in with an environment well enough. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule, where bad luck could just be playing a factor, and in which case, I am sorry, no amount of camouflage is going to cover for that. But hey, we've all been there, and remember, you are far from the only one who experienced this. Very far from the only one to experience this. But now I'd like to talk about something that I hinted to at the beginning, and that is the second part of this particular system, being able to choose your skin. And that is what I deem gimmick runs, or gimmick playthroughs. And this is not necessarily a tip on how to survive, but a tip on how to spice up gameplay if you find yourself running into kind of a stale wall. By gimmick playthroughs, I mean choosing a specific skin and style that then shape the way you behave as a creature or dinosaur in a particular area or in a particular map specifically, such as V3 or the old map. So say you want to be a Parasaurolophus, well then choose a gameplay style. Well, I want my Parasaurolophus to grow up mostly in the plains and stay in the plains, which will then dictate your colors and patterns that you choose. In this particular case, handicap yourself from going to other zones by choosing lighter greens, or maybe a darker green for when you get older, but something along the lines of a plains type of color. And in this way, you blend in very well in the plains and can hide there fairly easily, but you don't blend in in deep, rough foliage very well compared to the rest of the surroundings, as you're much lighter than the rest of them. Now I know it may seem weird to handicap yourself in this way, but it's actually something that I found to be incredibly entertaining, especially if you want to find yourself a challenge within the aisle. Say you've been playing through the game for a long time, and traditional survival, while difficult at times, you can consistently get a creature to a full grown state. I was in a similar position for a very long time, and have begun doing gimmick runs on other servers. Now, for those of you who don't know, I do most of my Let's Plays on Isla Nicta 3, a 200 people server that runs on the V3 map. Well, recently I decided to do a Rex playthrough on Isla Nicta 1, which is on the old map. This map has a very large swamp area, so I decided to exploit this particular area by choosing a very dark colored Tyrannosaurus. By very dark, I mean greens and mostly browns, and the reason I did this is so that I would blend in very well with the foliage that is in the swamp, and in turn blend in very well in the swamp, and then dictated a playstyle that I had for that particular dinosaur. Which for some might be going a step too far, but for me it was actually very entertaining. I dictated that my Tyrannosaurus was purely a nocturnal creature as it blended in very well at night, but stood out like a sore thumb in the middle of the day. So during the day, I would normally lounge around and only go for a very easy meal if it presented itself, or if I desperately needed water, but otherwise would carry out most of my activities at dawn and dusk and sometimes throughout the night. Well, this may sound incredibly strange, it was actually an absolute blast, and I am excited that I did it because this opens up a whole new opportunity for gameplay that I can do. In fact, on screen now, you probably see the Tyrannosaurus I got to full grown. Now here's the thing, remember that this is only a suggestion and this series as a whole, being the Isle Survival Guide, is mostly a tips and trick video. It's to help you survive longer in the Isle, and these gimmick runs will most likely not help you survive. I just found them incredibly entertaining, and I'm very glad that the gimmick run I did turned out to be so fun for me. Now, don't forget, even if you do camouflage your creature perfectly to an environment, sometimes you might just have dumb bad luck, and you might get stuck getting killed in ways you just don't expect. There have been points where I've starved to death despite having an absolutely perfect start, but at the same time, I've also stumbled upon creatures that I had no business of finding, just due to sheer dumb luck. 
So remember that the most important thing you probably can do is choose your environments and adapt your camouflage accordingly. If you really like wooded and dense areas, probably choose slightly darker colors with a darker green on top just to blend into the trees and stuff during the daytime and during the dusk and dawn hours. Nighttime is a little harder for camouflage due to the fact that eye shine gives you away pretty easily. But also remember that the Isles is not a MOBA. There is no perfect build path to create a perfect creature that's going to get you to the top the fastest. So at the same time as building a very camouflaged and perfectly adapted creature is, you can also make a jet black creature that looks absolutely amazing once it gets full grown and is a terror on the server while it's alive. So hey, be creative, come up with your own gimmicks, and remember that camouflage into an area comes down mostly to your playstyle. If you like being in certain areas, adapt your creatures to those areas via their color schemes. So, with that guys, I'd like to say thank you for watching episode 3 of the Isle Survival Guide, Skins and Camouflage. And while I know I state this almost every episode, I really do have to say thank you guys for supporting the channel. The channel itself just wouldn't exist in this capacity without you guys and I really do have to thank you for the support everybody that has watched my videos and given me feedback has given me. At the very end of this video there's going to be a very small update on what the next video is going to contain and why and while I won't spoil exactly what I'm making I will say that it is going to be a very different type of content to what I've produced so far so if that's something that interests you please stick around but otherwise guys Thank you for watching episode 3 of the Isle Survival Guide, and I will see you all next time. So hey, if you're listening to this, thank you for watching episode 3 of the Isle Survival Guide. So, real quick, I'd like to talk about what the next video on my channel is going to be, because it will not be Isle's content, and it will be a little funky. Now, long story short, I'm actually doing a review of a game that I've played an absolute crap ton of as of recently, and I feel like it's time for me to kind of dip my toe in other waters. The ARC series is something that I started just to add variety on my channel, but I've always wanted to do something along the lines of a review of a game just because it's something I'm very passionate about. Now I have to stress that even with what the review is going to be, I really do have to say that it will not affect the regular Isles content in any way, so don't worry. Other than that guys, thank you for watching the Isle Survival Guide Episode 3 and staying for this very small update. I just wanted to let you all know that the next video may not be the Isle. There might actually be a few videos in between because it's still kind of in the pre-production stage of just getting to editing now at the end of this particular editing session, so I'll figure it out. But as always guys, thank you for watching. I cannot thank you guys enough for the support, and I will see you all next episode.